Hello and welcome. I have a question for you. What does a Feld MMO, a retired baseball player, and the state of Rhode Island have in common? Well, the answer to that question is Kingdoms of Amalur Reckoning. Now, Kingdoms of Amalur came out in February of 2012. It had some good reviews and sold a pretty decent amount of copies, selling 1.2 million in the first 90 days, which is not bad for a new title. However, there was a bunch of behind the scenes mismanagement that led to the studio closing down and now the rights belong to THQ Nordic who hasn't done anything worth the IP which is a bit of a shame. Over the years Kingdoms of Amalur has developed a bit of a cult following with a lot of people praising it for being a good RPG. So I decided to jump into Kingdoms of Amalur and play through this game to see if it is worth playing in the year 2024. Now I like the story of Kingdoms of Amalur and the theme of fate. The world of Kingdoms of Amalur is bound to fate and you play as the Fateless One, a character you can create yourself with a pretty underwhelming character creator. On your journey you will encounter many different characters that will assist you throughout your journey, with your destiny being to free the world from fate. Like I said, I like the theme of the story and the story itself is pretty well put together together. The game also has some very cool lore surrounding its world and its inhabitants. Now it is not as extensive as the Elder Scrolls franchise, but it's nonetheless pretty interesting. But of course it's not all great. This is an RPG and there are a bunch of choices you can make. Most of these choices boil down to two options, that being the normal response or the mean response. These choices also don't seem to have that much impact on the world or the quests. But but there still are choices that have consequences, which is more than Skyrim has to offer, so there's that. However, I do feel that the system could have been a little bit better. Now the characters in the story are a little disappointing as well. For the most part they all kind of feel one dimensional. The only character that sort of stands out is Aelin Shur. The reason why is down to the fact that she is mysterious. It is never clear what her intentions or motivations are. This definitely helps expand her character a little more and is why she stands out from the rest in my opinion. However, the other characters are mostly forgettable. Overall, this is a pretty fun story. The lore is interesting, but the story is lacking in the dialogue options and it has a bunch of very forgettable characters. This game is absolutely beautiful. The world looks like a fairy tale and the cartoony art style holds up really well. For the most part, it feels like most fantasy games that come out today have a more realistic setting and this is why I like Kingdoms of Amalur's environments as it takes place in this fairy tale world that does a great job of feeling foreign and unique. It also helps that the architecture of this world looks great as well and perfectly fits with its fairy tale theme. I think the only recent game that captures this fairy tale atmosphere is the Blood and Wine expansion from The Witcher 3. It is a shame, as I personally really love this environmental design and would love to see more modern games incorporate this type of design. Now the cartoony art style does a really good job at making the game hold up really really well in terms of its visual aspect. The cartoony art style also looks really great with the fairy tale environment as it complements it really well. The only real complaint I have of the graphics is the pop-in. This game has some terrible pop-in, which I guess was an issue of its time. I know this is not the only game from that time that had this issue, but I mention it because it is very noticeable. Overall, Kingdoms of Amalur has a very unique looking world that is absolutely beautiful, with an art style that holds up really well and complements the environments perfectly.
When it comes to the quests and the levels of this game, I would say it is the weakest element of it. Let's start with the levels. The linear levels of this game is probably the best. It's straightforward linear levels with twists and turns, a bunch of chests and a bunch of enemies to kill. It doesn't reinvent the wheel, but it is straightforward, simple and it works. The first big issue that comes into question is the open world. Now much like Dragon's Dogma, this game's open world is designed like a linear level. It has a bunch of branching paths that come together to link different areas, and there are some wider open spaces. Now this game does encourage exploration, as there are a bunch of things to find within the world. So what exactly is the problem? Well, the things that you can find are not that rewarding. You will mostly find chests, and these chests contain a lot of junk. Furthermore, you have to be careful of overloading your inventory, so you should be picky with what you collect, given that most chests give you multiple items. It is easy to get overburdened and well it can sometimes take a while before you can come across merchants. Now the game does have a feature where you can add all your junk to well the junk and then you can destroy it which will give you a certain amount of coins. But the problem still lies in the fact that you will have to do a whole lot of inventory management. Speaking of the merchants, the weapons and armors sold by these merchants are better than the ones you can collect while exploring. Of all the items I collected, there were only a handful that I got which were actually better than the ones sold by these merchants. Also, most of the chests in the world are locked, meaning you will have to do the stupid lockpicking game to open these chests, just to get a bunch of garbage loot anyway. Now the other points of interest in this world are very simplistic and boring. The only ones that were actually fun were the dungeons and the enemy camps. The enemies that fill the world are a lot of fun to fight, but they don't exactly count as points of interest. Now the quests absolutely suck in this game. The quests never evolve beyond generic fetch quests, and like I mentioned this game was meant to be an MMO, and I believe all these side quests in this game game were remnants of that MMO. Some of these side quests have some interesting stories connected to them, which is a shame given that they are so boring to complete. The same goes for the main quests, as the main quests in this game follow the same quest design as the side quests, making them indistinguishable, which is a bit of a problem. Overall, you have a big open world that is fun to explore, but never rewards the player adequately, and the quests leave much to desire, making the quests and levels of this game the weakest element of it. The combat in this game absolutely slaps, and is pretty fun. The combat system feels pretty deep. There are a bunch of moves for each weapon type that you will unlock as you level up your character. There are a bunch of different classes, and there is the ability to create a hybrid class, which is very cool. The enemy variety is great as well, with a bunch of different enemies, with a variety of movesets, and each enemy type has their own weaknesses and strengths. However, towards the end of the game, the enemies are just reskins, but at least the majority of these reskinned enemies have their own moves. The enemy AI is great as well. Enemies will keep pressure on the player and will track the player's movement, meaning that you can't just spam the dodge button, as you will get punished for doing so. This also helps the game stay challenging, even on easier difficulties, which is something I really appreciate. There are a bunch of abilities as well, as you can equip four of these abilities at a time. Now each of these different classes have their own abilities, and I really like a lot of these abilities, as they are very useful in combat. However, some are not that useful. Most of these more useless abilities are not that great due to the fact that they aren't practical or because they just don't do enough damage. You also have your rage mode, or your fate mode, I don't know what it's called. Basically it's an ability that gives you insane strength for a while, and at the end of the 
enemy encounter or the boss fight you can do a finisher on an enemy that will give you a little button mashing mini game and the faster you button mash the more xp you will get which is a neat mechanic the combat animations are also very good this is important to help the combat feel impactful and feel satisfying and this game doesn't disappoint in this department now there are some issues i have with the gameplay at times the camera can get a little annoying for the most part it is fine but there were times in combat where the camera was at a weird uncomfortable angle that was a little annoying the crazy amount of movesets for each weapon type is pretty cool but it's very easy to just find the combo that works on an enemy type and just constantly spam it there are a few boss fights in this game some of which are really great while there are a whole lot that are pretty disappointing there is a very underdeveloped and very basic stealth system that i am pretty sure nobody uses and finally there is a crafting system that is needlessly complicated and requires way too many ingredients to create the most basic of items now despite these issues the combat system is probably the best part of this game and where the majority of the fun lies and i think that overall the gameplay in this game is pretty solid and holds up very well Kingdoms of Amalur has its issues. It came out a few months after Skyrim and a few months before Dragon's Dogma, so it had some tough competition. However, even though I think both of those games are way better, I still think that Kingdoms of Amalur is pretty underrated. Is it worth playing in 2024? Well, in my opinion, yes. I would love to see a sequel for this game, as it has a lot of potential and could be a great franchise. But but I seriously doubt we will see any more from this IP, which is kind of sad. And well, that brings me to the end of this video. I thank you very much for watching. Bye bye.